Now, you might have seen social media posts over the last few days warning about alcohol-based hand sanitizers exploding in hot cars. Even one of our local councils, Central Bedfordshire, tweeted to advise removing them from unoccupied vehicles. Well, is this really true? The National Fire Chiefs Council says it's not aware of any reported cases in the UK of hand sanitizers causing fires. So to clear this up and other issues related, of course, to the hot weather, I'm joined by the Chief Fire Officer for Bedfordshire Fire and Rescue, Paul Fuller. Paul, hi, morning. Morning, Stuart. Good morning. Well, let's just clear that one up first of all, shall we, about the hand sanitizers. Is there any truth at all in them being the cause of fires in cars? Right, so hand sanitizer, if you light it with a naked flame or a match, if you tip some out and light it, it will burn. It is, it is quite flammable. Um, but we've never known of a case of a bottle of hand sanitizer just catching fire because it's got too hot. So the chances of that happening in the car seem very, very unlikely. That's all the research that we've done so far. Um, and as you say, Stuart, the National Fire Chiefs Council have uh, only yesterday completed some work on this. Um, and it does seem very, very unlikely that uh, hand sanitizer will spontaneously combust in the car. So we're not very worried about that. OK, so very, very unlikely, you say. But if I was worried, should I leave my hand sanitizer in the car on a day like this? Is it is it well, safe? I, I, would, I wouldn't leave it in direct sunlight anyway. So, you know, on the Good dashboard point, yeah. or somewhere where it's going to get the sun anyway, because um, it does, in strong sunlight, it will warm up and it degrades a little bit. So it wouldn't be so effective as a sanitizer. So it's, the advice is to put it in the shade anyway because mm. of the product. Um, but as I say, if someone has left the car, got into the supermarket, you don't need to rush out of the supermarket and go and move the sanitizer because it won't just blow the car up. Yeah, no, good point. And well made. Thank you for that. That will have certainly put a lot of people's minds at ease on that one. Um, lots of pictures in the papers today of people hitting the beach, of course, in this weather. And, of course, swimming in open water is always always a big thing and obviously a huge danger for people in the hot weather. Have you had any cases come in recently? Well, do you know, fortunately, um, we, have, we didn't have any cases last summer at all. But in the five years before that, we had about 19 deaths in Bedford from people entering the water. Um, and this really is about that um, opportunist um, swimming, you know, when someone who perhaps has sat on the river bank, had a couple of drinks, thinks, oh, let's go and cool off in the river, jumps off the bridge. Very, very dangerous because you don't know what's in the water or coming under the bridge. Uh, the alcohol will um, make it much more difficult for you to swim anyway. Um, so this isn't about people in organised groups knowing where the safe places are with the proper equipment and training, uh, open water swimming. Uh, this is about those uh, the, the people that are having a good time and then they start to um, you know, jump into the water and perhaps take more risk than we normally would. Uh, it's a bit like if you, you know, would you think, oh, I, don't, I quite like to go parachuting, so I'll have a couple of beers jump off a high building with a homemade parachute, you know, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and it's a similar thing, really. Why would you take that chance? That's a good way of looking at it, I suppose. Um, it's been a very different time for all of us, but for you as well, um, it, it's been a very different period these last three months. I can't imagine, for example, that you'd have been called to the M1 very much, but uh, gradually, as, as, as lockdown starts to loosen, surely now things are things are changing and, and, and there are bigger concerns for you, yeah? There are, and I can tell you a little bit about what we've been up to. Um, first of all, I really want to pay tribute to all of the firefighters and support staff, control staff in um, Bedfordshire and beyond, and all our emergency service colleagues who have stepped up in an unprecedented way in the last three months to try to help and support and save lives in our community. Um, and so thank you very much to all of you wonderful people. Um, so... We, we in Bedfordshire um, have been to, the, to around about 70 road traffic cases over the last three months, so it has still been going on. Um, about 160 building fires, and worryingly, uh, nearly 400 fires outdoors. And that's all about those um, bonfires and barbecues and those sorts of things, which we are continually asking people to be careful with, you know. Um, 
But in terms of the actual response to the virus, um, and I know that these are replicated in in all of the services that um, are, you know are part of your listenership. But we in Bedfordshire have about 31 personnel trained to assist the ambulance service with mm. uh, driving ambulances. They've done about 2,000 patient interactions. Uh, we've delivered around 500 food parcels, 150 PPE delivery, um, 30 odd public safety messages, um, and helped help deliver some 350 additional theatre scrubs to Bedford Hospital. Amazing, so amazing. You've, you've, you've done loads and, and uh, you know, much appreciated and, and needed. And I just want to finally ask you, because there have been reports, of course, recently about the high number of COVID-19 cases in, in the Bedford area, what, what people are describing as maybe a little bit of a hotspot. Um, does that concern you? I mean, you would like to think what you just described wasn't going to have to happen again, but obviously with cases on the up again... It's concerning. Uh, absolutely. And we we can't um, uh, do this just by responding to the problems. It, it really is on, incumbent on all of us to try and make our own communities safer. And you are right, Stuart. The uh, Bedford and consequently Bedfordshire um, <clears throat> are, are responsible for around about 40% of the, of, of the cases in the eastern region but we have only 11% of the population. So that does give you pause for thought. And I think it is, you know, if people can remember those safety rules, maintain social distancing. I know we've said, or government has said, uh, a metre, but if we can main maintain two metres, why not? Um, we are going back to work. We are trying to get business and economy working, and that's quite right. But if you can do that from home, that's still safer. Uh, so, uh, and just it's just that being extra vigilant to try to make sure that we don't pass the virus from one to another, particularly in this beautiful weather where we want to be out and about more. Good advice. Thank you for talking to us, and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. I'm sure. That's Chief Fire Officer for Bedfordshire Fire and Rescue. There, Paul Fuller talking.